All right. Well, welcome everyone. We're so excited to meet you all today and to tell you a bit about the Teen Leadership Council. Kristen and I are going to introduce ourselves and then we'll dive into um, all of the great info we have for you. Um, I love seeing where everyone is from in the chat, your name, your grade, uh, where you go to school and something you um, looking forward to this summer. That's really exciting. Um, my name is Andrea Anderson. I'm a program manager at Health Partners. Um, and along with Kristen, I uh, help support the Teen Leadership Council. Um, I went to high school in Wisconsin, a little town by Chippewa Falls. Um, it's called, the little town is called Thorpe. And then I went to uh, get my undergraduate degree at the University of Wisconsin La Crosse. And then I got my master's degree at the University of Washington in Seattle. And I'm looking forward to just getting outside uh, more this summer, um, paddle boarding and going on walks. Hi everyone, I'm Kristen Mullen and I use she, her pronouns. Uh, if for high school, I also went to school in uh, Wisconsin, central Wisconsin, where I grew up um, in Mosinee is the name of the town. I did my undergrad at the University of Wisconsin La Crosse and then got my master's degree at the University of Minnesota here in the Twin Cities. And something that I'm looking forward to this summer is uh, having bonfires with friends. All right, so what we're gonna to cover today during our time together are what you see on the screen here. We'll talk about what the TLC is, what the TLC does, a little bit about the leadership structure of the TLC. And then we'll also talk a little bit about the time commitment and attendance for the TLC members. And then we'll have plenty of time for Q and A because we know everyone's coming today uh, to the info session because you're interested in the Teen Leadership Council, so you likely have questions and we are here to answer them for you. Okay, so what is the Teen Leadership Council? Uh, I'm going to read this little statement to you because it summarizes very nicely what the Teen Leadership Council is and then um, throughout our other slides, Kristen and I will dive into more details for you. The Health Partners Teen Leadership Council, or the TLC, develops the next generation of resilient leaders by amplifying youth voices and giving them a platform to make change in their communities. The TLC is teen-led, and what that means is that the TLC is adult-supported, but activities are teen-initiated. So all the brainstorming and activities are determined by TLC members. Um, all the members set the direction of what the Teen Leadership Council works on and does. And we as adults are there to support the ideas and the work and help make them come to life. So that's a little bit different than school, for example, where the teacher in each class is in charge and is saying, this is what we're gonna work on and here's how each day is gonna go. Um, what the TLC works on and how the meetings go is largely dictated by the members. So Kristen and I are not saying, here's what you're gonna work on and here's how your meetings are gonna go. Um, that's up to you all as members. Members of the TLC will participate about two to four hours per week from September through May. Um, that's just our best guess and on average about how much time members can expect to put into and dedicate to the TLC. Um, each week might be different. There might be some weeks that you don't really have anything going on for the TLC, but there might be other weeks that you have a little bit more going on. So it kind of evens out to two to four hours per week. All members receive incentives for their time, commitment, and participation. We know everyone is really busy, um, and so your um, contributions to the Teen Leadership Council, um, they certainly don't go unnoticed, and we want you to be compensated for that. So every member receives a gift card for every meeting that they attend, um, and there are a whole bunch of different gift card options, including Amazon, Target, Cub Foods, Quick Trip, Starbucks, Chipotle, um, that might be most of the options there, but um, for every meeting that members attend, they get a gift card. All right, and then who is the TLC? Uh, each year, the Teen Leadership Council is a group of 20 to 25 
teams from across the Twin Cities Metro and Western Wisconsin. So as you can imagine, that's a really large geography, right? All the way from the West Metro to Western Wisconsin, um, North Metro, South Metro. It includes a lot of different school districts and a lot of teams from many different communities. Um, members are high school students, 14 to 18 years old, and members are interested in health and well-being. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more in a bit about what we mean by health and well-being. Um, but all the activities and uh, things during the TLC is focused around health and well-being topics in some way, shape, or form. All right, so I'm going to dive in and talk about uh, this wheel diagram on the slide. And uh, what this is showing is kind of how we lay out our approach or the structure of the Teen Leadership Council. So these um, buckets kind of guide how we think about the activities and the work within the council. Um, first, we have connection and belonging. So that's all about creating a safe and inclusive space where everyone's identities are valued. And adults and teens have different roles in that bucket. So teens uh, work on building relationships with peers and with their communities. So as Andrea said, the teens are coming from all across uh, the metro area and beyond. So um, building connections with um, people who you might not know or have connected with otherwise. And then we also connect with our communities um, through various activities. Adults um, in that bucket encourage opportunities for relationship development. So again, we're there to kind of guide and support and provide opportunities for members. Uh, the Youth Adult Partnership Bucket, um, we practice shared decision making, so adults and teens are both learning from each other. So this again ties back to the teen-led structure that Andrea mentioned in the beginning. Uh, so teens are initiating and implementing a lot of the work and the action uh, that happens within the council, and adults um, our role is to really just have confidence in all of the members and be there as um, supports if needed. And then in our leadership development bucket, uh, we're providing opportunities to grow and practice leadership skills and compassion. So teens are using um, their unique strengths and leadership styles to work together with other teens and get the work done. And adults are uh, there to, oh, adults are there to, to sorry, is someone talking? Adults are there to empower teens uh, to step into leadership roles and lean into their their strengths. So these three things together kind of build our structure for the Teen Leadership Council. Um, in the background, you can see resilience kind of goes around the outside. And one of our long-term goals with the council and what we hear from members is um, we're just focusing on building our resilience skills as, as people. So that's kind of the foundation. When we um, get asked all the time, what do the teens do? Uh, we have five different activity areas that the TLC focuses on. So as Andrea said, a lot of the work and the decisions um, come from the members themselves, but we do have these five pillars that serve as um, activity areas. So the first one is volunteering where teens help make a difference by giving back to the community. Uh, they get to contribute and work with an organization or a topic area of their choice. So an example of that from previous years has been at the St. Paul Opportunity Center, the teens um, prepared and served meals to people who were unhoused. Another connection and belonging related activity would be teen bonding. This one's kind of woven in throughout the entire um, program year, but connecting and collaborating with others that might look like doing a project together, that might look like co-leading a meeting, um, that might be through one of the icebreaker activities or a teen um, organized retreat day, uh, a whole bunch of different ways that um, we're fostering connection. And then in the Youth Adult Partnership Bucket, one of the activity areas the TLC focuses on is uh, called consulting, where members uh, serve as a voice of change in uh, impacting real life 
programs and projects. So typically what that looks like is if there are adults in the community that um, know about the TLC or that Andrew and I have connected with, they might have a project that they're working on and they want teen input or voice uh, in that. So um, they come to the TLC and they say, hey, will you uh, consult us and give us your opinions on this, on this project we're working on? And if the TLC says, yeah, sure, we would love to do that, then uh, we organize a time for the teens uh, to give feedback on, on those projects. So um, it's a really cool way that um, difference can be made through the voice of teens um, through the program. An example of that has been uh, there are several, but one of them, um, the chair of pediatrics for health partners um, came to the TLC and asked if they would consult on the teen survey or questionnaire that's given out at um, doctor's visits. Uh, and so they wanted to know, uh, you know, are these the right questions we should be asking? Is there anything that's missing from here? How would you like these conversations to go when you are meeting um, with a doctor within our clinics? So that was just a way that the teens were able to provide their insight. And then changes were made to that questionnaire based on what uh, the TLC told them. And then in our leadership development bucket, we have strengths and leadership based activities. So we explore our personal strengths, we uh, develop and practice different skills. Um, we also explore leadership styles and how our strengths and leadership styles um, work with and build upon the strengths and leaderships of others. So um, lots of just kind of like focusing and reflecting inward, but also as a group. And then the last piece here on activities the TLC uh, focuses on, this one is health workshops. So we learn about the different dimensions of wellness and how they impact our community's health. Um, I'll get to that in a minute, but an example, um, teens get to kind of select the topic areas that they want to learn more about. And then um, Andrea and I help facilitate guest speakers or learning opportunities um, within that area. Last year, uh, that looked like um, it was kind of like a health workshop on opioids and the opioid epidemic. So teens kind of learned more about what that was and then ways that that's impacting our community's health. So I just mentioned the dimensions of wellness and that how that's kind of like how it relates to our health workshops. So a little bit more on that because I think a lot of people who are interested in um, the TLC see that we are a program within health partners, which is true. Um, Andrew and I work in our community health um, department at, at health partners. So we don't um, have clinic roles or patient facing roles. Instead, the way that we look at health and well being is kind of through a multi dimensional approach, um, like what you see here on the slide. So we um, know that health is way more than what happens within uh, clinic walls. So we're looking at things like emotional health and physical health. Um, mental health, environmental health, kind of our self-esteem and things like that. And we're also um, looking at that through a lens of the social determinants of health. And if you haven't heard of those, those are things that affect our health, um, like income, race, education, food access, transportation. So kind of um, community level um, issues that, that we're seeing within our um, in our communities. So throughout the year, the activities that the TLC works on and the areas that they impact or volunteer usually fall within these buckets. All right, so a little bit about the leadership structure for the TLC. There are two co-chairs each year um, who plan and facilitate meetings, take notes, hold others accountable and make sure the work gets done. They also empower other members and help them feel comfortable voicing their thoughts, opinions, and ideas. Um, so at the beginning of every program year, any member who's interested in being a co-chair can kind of put their name in the hat and say that they're interested. Um, and then the TLC votes on who they would like as their two co-chairs for that year. 
Another leadership uh, opportunity within the TLC are project leaders. Um, project leaders volunteer to lead specific projects and activities. Like some examples of those might be discussions during meetings, newspapers, team bonding activities, social media or communications on the TLC, and anything else that the members decide they want to do as a council. Um, so at any point during the year, if the TLC says, hey, we really want to continue our monthly newsletters, for example, um, anybody on the TLC can say, I'm really interested in being a project leader for that. Um, or here's another example. Let's say the TLC decides they want to volunteer for a particular organization. Anybody on the TLC can volunteer as a project leader and say, I'm really interested in helping to lead that volunteer opportunity. Those are just two many examples to give you an idea. And then as program staff, we um, practice being equal partners with the teens on the council. And we also empower teens to step into leadership roles and help to support and guide members as needed. Meetings are the second and fourth Mondays of every month from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Um, if one of the regularly scheduled meeting dates happens to be on a holiday, we of course would not have it that day, um, but typically it's the second and fourth Mondays of the month. Uh, meetings are at Health Partners Neuroscience Center in St. Paul. This is a photo of the building that you, that you see here, and all of our meetings are in person. Attendance at meetings is really, really important. Um, we know that everyone is really busy, especially once the school year gets started. There's a lot of activities going on, a lot of clubs, extracurricular activities, maybe sports, maybe part-time jobs, just so much happening. And so we really encourage all applicants to really consider what your schedule is going to look like next school year. If you know that you have a really packed schedule and that meeting on the second and fourth Mondays of every month for TLC meetings just is going to be really hard for your schedule. Um, it's okay if you don't apply or submit your application. We want everyone to be successful at what you have on your schedule. Um, and so over committing can sometimes make that really hard for us. It can be overwhelming and just make us feel like we're pulled in too many directions. So really think hard as you consider applying to the TLC about what your commitments are for this upcoming school year, um, because attendance at TLC meetings is expected and is really important. We also um, encourage everyone to consider your transportation options. The meeting, as we mentioned, is at the Health Partners Neuroscience Center in St. Paul. Um, so if um, anyone would like to talk about transportation options, um, we are here if needed. Okay, so here's a snapshot of our application process, which I'm assuming you at least saw a little bit about because you're all here tonight. So um, we have kind of a three step approach to our TLC application um, in no particular order. Uh, we have attendant info session. So um, we are, will take attendance from those of you who are here tonight and um, you can all check that off of the list. Um, the second step is to complete an online application form, um, and that can be found on our website. I'll put that in the chat real quick um, if you need it, but that online application just asks a few demographic questions and then um, asks you to submit a personal statement, ask, answering a few questions that we have laid out in, in the form. Um, you can submit your personal statement in a written form or a video form. So whichever um, your strengths are in um, writing or speaking, um, it's up to you. So one or the other of those. And then the third step is to have any adult who knows you well and can speak to your strengths, complete the online recommendation form. So that could be a teacher, a coach, a family friend, a faith community leader, that could be a parent, that could be anyone um, who can speak to your strengths. So all three of those steps are um, due on June 18th 
And then um, we take a week or two to review all the applications and um, are hoping to have everyone uh, aware of whether or not they're accepted by the end of June. Okay, so we save a lot of time at the end um, for questions because that's why a lot of you are here. Um, and you can see our emails here on the slide if you need those for anything, um, take those down. Um, but we also, so feel free to put in the chat or unmute and ask your question. If it did not get answered, we'd be happy to talk more about any of those areas. Um, and before we get to that, and while people are thinking of their questions, we would love to hear how everyone heard about the TLC. So our question for you um, is how you heard about the TLC. If you wanna just put that in the chat, uh, that would be great. We love seeing where people are, are hearing about it. See family friend through school through hostel. school counselor health partners connections maybe some other programs you're part of. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Um, we're going to open it up for any questions that any of you have. I have a question about the recommendation from an adult. Yeah. So I looked at the online form. Do they need to write a full letter or just fill out the questions online? Good question. They can just fill out the questions online. So on our website, there is a link to an online recommendation form. And you can just send that link over to the adults who you want to fill that out on your behalf. And they can just answer those questions in the online form. Um, they don't need to send a separate letter. OK, thank you so much. Yeah. What other questions are there? I see one in the chat that says, I know attendance is heavily encouraged, but on the off chance I do miss a meeting, are there any penalties? Good question. Um, I can answer that one, Andrea. So we don't have any um, necessarily like penalties for um, missed meetings. We do ask that we hear from students ahead of time if they um, know that they're going to miss a meeting for sickness or you know, family emergencies, we know things come up. So we can be flexible with those. Usually um, after about two missed meetings, Andrew and I reach out to members just to make sure that their participation is still working for them. So um, after those kind of two missed meetings, we wanna make sure that this is still an opportunity that they're able to commit to for the remainder of the year. Um, just because a lot of work moves really fast. And um, if people miss meetings, it's sometimes hard to catch up and it's hard for the other members to catch them up. So um, no, no, no penalties for missing because of like being sick or you know family emergencies or things like that. We know that that stuff happens. Good question. What else are people wondering? What are some of the main projects that TLC worked on last year? Great question. Um, we can give some more examples of things that the TLC did in the 
pillar areas that Kristen went over. Um, so in volunteering, the TLC, Kristen already mentioned the TLC wanted to volunteer for the St. Paul Opportunity Center. Um, another volunteer opportunity they were interested in included um, packing opioid overdose prevention kits for an organization called the Steve Rumler Hope Network. Um, in the past, um, the TLC has also helped to, um, I guess, gather hygiene items in the form of a drive or donation drive for a homeless shelter. Um, also, the TLC in the past has chosen to rake leaves for um, older adults or um, maybe people who are kind of homebound and unable to um, rake their yard on their own. So just, those are just some examples. Um, a few other consultation opportunities that the TLC wanted to engage in when invited included um, for the Make It OK campaign. Um, that was um, giving feedback on mental health and mental illness stigma that teens see in their lives um, and giving feedback on the Make It OK campaign on how they could um, better reach adults so that they support teens better um, when they open up about their mental health and mental illnesses. Um, another example of a consultation was for an organization called Every Meal who helps to fill the um, meal and food gap for students who rely on free breakfast and lunch during the school year. So they provide uh, weekend um, meal packs uh, for students uh, when they obviously don't have a school breakfast or lunch over the weekend. So the teens volunteered for them, um, or excuse me, provided a consultation for them about um, a project that they were embarking upon to open food shelves in middle and high schools. So there are just some examples there. Um, the TLC last year decided they wanted to write monthly newsletters to let people know what they're up to. Um, and so on our website or the TLC's website at the bottom, you can actually check out those newsletters and read more, even more about the things that they worked on um, over the course of their year together if you're hoping to find even more details. The other thing um, last year that was a big kind of uh, planning that the, the group did was they planned a um, like a mini conference or a speaker to come and they shared more about their program year and then there was a keynote speaker who um, talked about youth adult partnership and they invited school and community people um, into, into the space to learn more about um, youth led programming and why it's important for adults to uh, to do more teen-led programming. So that was kind of a big um, event that they planned. I, saw, I see a question about the volunteering on whether um, we do that only during the set times of our meetings from 6 to 7.30 p.m. And the answer is kind of, it depends what the um, opportunity is. So sometimes organizations either don't have a volunteer opportunity at that time, or they're not open during that time. So if the TLC decides that they really want to do um, a specific volunteer opportunity, sometimes we have to look at a different time um, that might be on a weekend, for example, or another weeknight. Um, I'll also mention that volunteer opportunities outside of meetings are not mandatory um, or, or part of participation. Those are um, more optional opportunities for members. How many student applications do you usually receive each year? That's a good question. And it's been growing. Um, we are gonna be in year five of the Teen Leadership Council and I think it's grown every year. Um, the last time I checked, I wanna say we had maybe 50 applications coming in, but those were not confirmed. They were like started applications. Um, so usually not everyone finishes them or um, some people just kind of want to like check it out. So they start the application, but um, they don't end up submitting. But I think there's about 50 when I looked. I see a question asking, does the council work with school-based clinics? Um, and um, current or so far, no, the TLC has not, but that doesn't mean they couldn't. Um, as Kristen mentioned, the TLC is not focused on healthcare or medicine. Um, 
because the TLC focuses on the other dimensions of well-being um, that impact individuals or communities health, like Kristen went over. But that doesn't mean that the TLC couldn't work with school-based clinics. Um, so that's up for discussion. A lot of members um, tend to be interested in healthcare um, who, who are on the Teen Leadership Council or who are, you know, um, who apply. And so um, we recognize that. Um, we also work for a health system. So uh, there is a lot of really great insights that people who are planning to go into the medical field can gain from focusing on health with the other dimensions outside of clinic walls too. So you, it's basically for people who are interested in health and well-being, but that doesn't mean that you need to like want to be a doctor, for example. Um, anyone, we have a lot of people who are end up like going to college for business degrees or um, for, I don't know, the, the more social science areas. Um, and they gain a lot of insight from our health workshops and the activities that we do for learning um, about health in kind of a different way. I see another question that asks, are the structures of the meeting similar or does each meeting end up being pretty different? Um, there are some pieces of meetings that are similar, um, but then it can differ each time as well. So I'll give you a little bit of an example. Each meeting typically starts out with an icebreaker. So some of that team bonding um, opportunity that Kristen mentioned earlier. Um, and icebreakers typically rotate between um, members. So members sign up for an icebreaker date or a meeting date that they want to plan and lead the icebreaker. And then from after that, the meetings can look very different. Sometimes there's planning and discussion and work that needs to happen um, based on what the TLC wants to do. Other times there might be a health workshop, like Kristen mentioned, about a health topic that the TLC is really interested in. Or maybe another time um, after the icebreaker is a consulting opportunity where a community partner comes to the TLC meeting to get the TLC members feedback on the project they're working on. Those are just some examples, but um, typically they're all pretty different or a little bit Definitely. Um, I see another question. What are the main qualifications that factor into a member being selected? That's a great question and also a really hard one. Um, you all may have noticed that uh, if you checked out the application or at least the TLC website that having prior leadership experience with other leadership groups or programs is not required um, because we know that everyone has leadership experience regardless of whether or not you have been in an, another leadership program. Um, if you have a part-time job, that's leadership experience. If you take care of younger siblings or cousins, um, that's leadership experience. Um, if you are in a club at school, that's leadership experience too. So leadership experience comes from so many different areas in our lives. Um, so I just wanted to mention that you don't need to have prior experience from a leadership um, program to, to um, be on the TLC. Um, but some other main qualifications that we look for when we are reviewing applications is that um, we have a rubric actually that uh, ask questions about like where do applicants um, live, for example, we try to, because the geography is so big, the whole Twin Cities Metro in Western Wisconsin, we try to make sure that we have a good spread of where members are from. So not all members are from the East Metro, for example, or from the West Metro, for example. We want members from all over the Twin Cities Metro in Western Wisconsin. So um, we look at that, we look at, you know, make sure that applicants are a high school student um, for this upcoming school year and just that you have everything else completed on your application as Kristen mentioned that you've attended an info session that your recommendation form is filled out and that your personal statement either written or video whichever you choose is submitted as well. Lots of really good questions. We have time for a few more. So if there's other things that popped up, feel free to put those in the chat or unmute.
How many people get accepted? Yeah, good question. So um, each, each program year, we have capacity for 20 to 25 members on the council. So um, we've gone up to 25, um, but based on kind of, sometimes we've considered a full council 20, uh, depending on the number of applicants and, um, and kind of just making sure that we have a diverse council. So yeah, 20 to 25. I see a question. Um, do members who were in the TLC last year have to reapply or are their spots already filled? Their spots are already filled. So um, members who participated last year, let us know if they plan to return. And if they do, um, that will be a spot that's filled. So we're working on determining how many um, are returning from last year um, still at this point. Their, their program year isn't quite finished yet. Um, how long should a written application be? Is there a word limit or anything? There's not a word limit. Um, we, we read through applications of all different lengths um, and, and watch, and watch um, written statements of all different lengths. So uh, whatever you feel that you want to share that um, fully answers the questions we have for you is plenty. So it's up to you. see a question asking if um, we get notified if we don't get accepted. Um, everyone will be notified of acceptance or if they weren't accepted. So as Kristen mentioned, applications close on June 18th and then we have the next two weeks to review applications. Um, and then by the end of June, um, everyone will receive an email um, about the status of their application. All right, I think that answered one question there that just came in. When will you be notified? Um, so end of June. And then Mara has a question, what should the format for the written application be? Um, so actually the, um, so there is a survey monkey questionnaire for the application. You just need to fill that out. And then for the personal statement, you can either write the personal statement or submit it via a video, you can upload a video instead if you want. Um, if you're choosing to write it, there isn't necessarily a particular format that we are looking for. Um, and same for a video, not a particular format or type of video that we're looking for. Um, you can feel free to be creative if you want, um, or it can just be a Word document or a simple video. I see Kristen just put in the chat the link to the application if anyone hasn't seen that yet. Can we submit our application before our recommendation comes in or should those be submitted together? You can definitely submit your application before the recommendation comes in. And we typically send a little, um, I guess, status update to all applicants um, before the June 18th deadline, just to let everyone know um, like, hey, we, thank you for applying. We got this part of your application, but is, are still missing this part, for example. So um, you can always email us at any time as well if you're curious on um, whether or not your recommendation form has come in. We're happy to check on that for you. Andrea just put in the chat our uh, emails again. If you need those or think of questions after this session, you can email us at any time and we'd be happy to answer your questions um, more one on one if needed. Were either of us in the TLC 
We were not. So Andrew and I um, have been in our roles at Health Partners for uh, about five years. And early on in our positions, um, we were tasked with creating a youth program. So um, Andrew and I met with a whole bunch of youth leaders um, across you know, really the country and learned what best practices there are for creating a youth program that's teen led. So we um, established the TLC in 2019. I know what I'm saying, 2019. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been kind of modifying and we get feedback every year from the cohort of members to make changes to the TLC. But um, yeah, so we put all of our brains together to, to come up with the program about um, four years ago. Those are all really great questions, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, well, we are at our time and we want to, we know everyone's busy. So we want to be able to, you know, be respectful of your time. As Kristen mentioned, if you have any questions or think of any more after um, tonight, you can always email us. We're happy to answer those for you. Um, but we're, we really appreciate you logging on tonight, asking all your questions, and it was really great meeting you. Thanks, everyone. We look forward to getting your applications. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.